Hello and welcome to Hive State Bakugan. The other day, a friend of mine asked Ventus Knight a question, and that was, can we customize our Bakugan? And the answer is yes, as long as you keep them within the faction that they originally are and make them, like, basically don't paint an Aquas red, stuff like that. So, today, I'm going to take this Aralus Pegatrix and make it, well, let's make it pretty. Let's go over to the table. All right, so now that we're at the table, of course, the first thing we need to do is get rid of the packaging for the RLS Pegatrix, so let's do that. And now that we have the Pegatrix beautiful and unboxed, what we need to do is, well, prime it. So all the paint and work that I plan on doing will stay real nice. The primer I plan on using today is a Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Metallic Finish. It's this nice gold, so... All we gotta do with that is get it primed. Look at this beautiful new shine. Just a little bit better gold in my opinion. Now, the next thing we have to do, we have to take this and I don't wanna keep it this gold. I need to bring the tones down and then bring some tones back up, add some silvers and blacks back in and well, we'll see how that goes as it goes. So the first thing that I did is I used a wash called Heavy Body Black, I believe. Yeah, Heavy Body Black. It's by uh, Heavy Secret Weapons Washes. I like this one quite a bit for, uh, well, quite a few things. I mostly use it on Necrons, but that's that's for another video right there. I honestly believe that if I do another Arliss, Next time, I'm going to use a wash that I use later in this video, but that's what I used here. Now, what you'll see here, I'm taking a golden color. This one is... Uh, which one is this? I believe this is model color Old Gold. Yeah, this is a Vallejo, Vallejo brand. I like it quite a bit, but I'm just going back in and where I first dirtied up the miniature, now I'm cleaning up the miniature. All the little uh, dirt black parts that I didn't want, this is where I, well, I take them away. Clean it up a bit. Where this is one of the first, actually not one of the first, where this is the first Bakugan I've ever, well, repainted. There's something I didn't think about whenever I started, and it was the fact that, well, some parts of the Bakugan you see closed look different than whenever it opens, and it's, it was interesting trying to work around that to see, like, what needs to be shifted to finish painting and all of that. Here, you'll notice a uh, bunch of gray just got on. My camera wasn't recording whenever I did this as I was letting the last coats dry. So what I'm doing is I'm blocking out all of the areas that silver is gonna be on. Uh, with metallic paints, I've realized that you really do not want to put uh, metallic colors over certain colors. Um, oh, the gray that I'm using here, by the way, is a medium C gray, also by Vallejo. And this is a uh, model color. But whenever you paint metallics, you're basically wanting to paint under coats before you go back in. But also here, transferred over and started doing black. This is just, again, Vallejo model color black. Nothing special. The reason I wanted to use black instead of keeping those little parts gold is I almost wanted the illusion that it wasn't there. That way I could paint around it and it just be, well, not there. Also did it on the bottom, which ended up, it scrapes off so easy. Then this is the wash right here that I was talking about. This is Games Workshop or technically Citadel's brand. And this is just Nuln Oil. Oh, this stuff is beautiful. It goes so nice. It dries so wonderfully. 
and then I brighten it back up like I did last time. This is just the same uh, medium sea gray that I used for the base. It's amazing how little you can do and then just it pulls out so many, much of the detail that's on these Bakugan. For the lack of paint that's on the Bakugan whenever you first buy them, there's quite a lot you can work with. I definitely, if you all like this type of video, I want to do more of these. This was a very fun project. However, it was, it was a little bit um, difficult painting with my arms around a camera, so some of the line work is not as clean as I would like it, but nevertheless, I, I enjoy doing this quite a lot. To finish up on the wings, I work on the tail a little bit. Now, what I'm doing here, this little brush, it's just an old junky brush, and I'm taking a brass acrylic. It's a Vallejo model color as well. You'll notice I like that brand quite a bit. But what I did with it is I just kind of smudged it over things, not with any specific way that I wanted it to go on, because I think it gives the metal more of a, a grimy feel, but a brighter grime. And then I go back and do line work with a brighter gold. So this gold is a Citadel layer. It's, uh, I might mispronounce the paint, but it's Auric Armor Gold. It, I bought two golds to try this on and I liked that one better. It is just a nice looking gold to outline things. This, this silver is what I was talking about earlier. First, I brought in the grays to give it that undercoat. Then I go back and add the silver over top. That way you're not fighting the color underneath. One simple little clean coat over top and well, it brightens up the miniature or the Bakugan in this point quite a bit. You know, a lot of detail work, often it's not skill, it's just technique just using the same things over and over again, but doing it just a little bit less so you get nice little gradients and stuff like that. It's honestly a little relaxing. Then I realized that I didn't finish up with the gold earlier, so I'm having to go back and finish what I started, actually. Uh, not to ruin the magic, but there was a day between these two parts whenever I was doing the silver and gold, so I kind of forgot that I was working on gold whenever I went and did the silver. Either way, it gets there, but back to outlining. Now this is me adding, well, maybe. Yeah, this is me adding white to the model. I found whether you're doing non-metallic metals or metallic metals, adding just a little hint of white at the very highlights, it just pulls out so much of this detail and makes it look so much shinier and just uh, so nice. I like doing silvers quite a bit, I'm still not where I want to be at them, but hey, practice makes perfect, and practicing on Bakugan makes perfect for Bakugan. I, I don't know where I was going with that. Also did the front bits. I almost did a little main silver as well, 
but ended up deciding against halfway through the project. Uh, with the gold, I'm doing the same thing here, but instead of a white, I'm using a very bright yellow. Again, I was bouncing back and forth between two kinds. The yellow I ended up using here is lemon yellow from Vallejo model color. And I'm not outlining everything like I did in white. I am just doing the corners and little, little accents to bring it out. It's actually the first time I've tried doing this. So it was an experiment in itself, but it got there and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I forgot to do some of the inside parts. So that's what you see doing now. Painting those little inner silver bits that I wanted silver. Going and adding more to the horn because I painted closed and realized I needed to fix that. Oh, and I also didn't, there was a reason that I didn't do any of the outlines on the face at first. And it's because I was gonna do the eyes first. But decided to kind of go against it and just keep a steady hand and just do the yellow instead. I wanted to give extra outline towards those going down the face. And then changed my mind on the tail, wanted that to have black space as well. So did black for the hooves just to kind of mimic or mirror the hooves on the unpainted version. In hindsight, I think I would have liked these to be silver, but I'm, I'm okay with it. Then on the inside of the little undercarriage, I don't know what it'd be called. I went back with all of those and did the same the same things I was talking about earlier, that brightening it back up and giving it lines and stuff like that. Now, there is something that I'd like to give warning whenever you're painting a Bakugan, and this is something that I found out a little harshly. Um, they don't want to open as well at first whenever you repaint them. So, what I ended up having to do, which is not on camera, that's why I'm explaining it now, I went back and took an X-Acto knife and had to slim away or like kind of cut off some of the paint job in the inside of the front, I guess their legs, the front legs. So that way it had the normal springy function that it always does. Another thing I had to do is I took a little tool underneath the wings, which I left them unpainted. That was on purpose. Part of the on purpose was out of laziness but it was on purpose. But on the little hook parts, I took a little file and scraped away all the paint that I had just added on. The little layers of paint on both sides ended up wanting to stick together. So when the wings wouldn't open, it would kind of stick to the core, but it'd stay in ball form and that helped it quite a bit. So yeah, that was everything that I did for it. Here's the before and afters. Um, I mean, I'm happy with the way it turned out, so no complaints from me. If you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it, I do want to make more of these, so definitely keep me informed if you liked it. Um, not sure which Bakugan I'll do next. If you leave it in the suggestions, I mean, it's a possibility. But until next time, make sure to stick around. Something's interesting coming up next week. So, whether you do or whether you don't, you'll see me when you see me.